So in the systems life cycle, after the feasibility study has been done, where you've looked at whether it's a feasible project to go ahead with, uh, you then want to collect information and that's really what we're looking at here. It's not a one size fits all so we need to look at different methods and different ways of approaching it and the pros and cons with that. So although there was some um, gathering of data in order to define the problem and ultimately come up with a feasibility study, this is really where information is gathered that uh, is going to make an analyst understand the problem in order that he can then put a solution together or get his team to put a solution together to actually fix what's going on here. So this definition I've taken from your syllabus course text and I don't think there's anything better than what's put there. Um, understanding the problem is what it's about but it's important that you get your head round the difference between understanding the problem so getting information to understand the problem and getting information to actually run the solution and the syllabus course text goes into an example there which is really worth looking at so it's not about information that's going to be needed to actually run the thing as regards specifics day to day it's about information to understand the problem so I'm quite aware here that I'm just saying problem all the time and looking for solution let's try and just take a step back and think to ourselves what we're looking at here this is an analyst that's walked into an organization or been invited into an organization of course um, has looked through whether he can do this thing that they've asked him to do he's come up with the feasibility to study said he can and then he's really looking at um, defining um, exactly what goes on so he's defined the problem already he's done the feasibility study and and he's now looking to collect information so he can actually define all the elements that go on all the specifics all the routines the way they work currently and then can look at actually what their needs are so if you can look at the present solution or the present system that's in place then you can start to look at what is actually wrong with it so you've got an overview you've got an idea otherwise you wouldn't have come up with the feasibility study but an analyst really has to know exactly where specific things are happening and how they relate to each other so it's, it's about understanding the problem better so when we get into the nitty gritty of how information is going to be collected uh, we'll put it into two different ways of collecting information let's look at collecting information from people to start with and uh, there are many different methods and which method you'll actually use will depend on uh, what the organization is that you're looking at uh, the three that uh, this specification really wants you to focus on is interview questionnaire and group meetings and you've got to actually consider what are the pros and cons of these obviously with interviews um, you're gonna get information straight from the horse's mouth you're gonna get th people to say things uh, that they might not otherwise write down and if you pick the right people you may get vital information but picking the right people can be difficult and also it is really time consuming and ultimately costly and you're not really going to be able to do many just think of in your own school when you come to progress review we have to shut the school for an afternoon just to get three people through a progress review or four at the most so when you look at it like that the balance of time and how much it costs and whether you're going to be able to get through quite a lot of this as an analyst it's questionable isn't it so you might just pick specific people in key roles um, as regards what the problem is and what you think the solution is going to end up like and you might interview them whereas questionnaire questionnaires form a much um, a much broader scope you can hand out lots of questionnaires you can get a consensus of opinion amongst a large body of workers in a large organization um, or an organization with a large amount of customers that can give you a, a, obviously a great amount of feedback but there are issues out there with questionnaires because somebody's got to design the questionnaire and then you've got to think about the value of some of the questions do they actually get the responses you want obviously when you've been given questionnaires in your time you'll know that sometimes you don't fill them in truthfully and is there a worry as to anonymity with questionnaires and all those kinds of things come into question so uh, there are pros and cons with that method as well somewhere in between these two is is a group meeting um, obviously that has the characteristics of um, interview but on a larger scale so it cuts down on time and costs with that but 
then you've got to think does everybody get the chance to say something um, if there's a worker with his supervisor line manager that kind of thing are they going to be honest about things are they going to talk about their particular problems or are they going to get led down the path by other people in the meeting so collecting information from people has got to have different methods with it and it's got to be decided on which methods are going to be used in particular organisations and particular circumstances and then the um, second type of um, information gathering you've got the first uh, coming from information from people but you'd actually then uh, look at other methods and the two really you should focus on here is observation and the second being looking at documentation now the thing to be aware of when looking at observation is you really want to look at what's actually happening rather than um, somebody putting on a show for you you want to see how workers go about their daily business how operations happen and it really depends on the type of organisation as to what exactly you'll be looking at obviously if you're in manufacturing you'll be looking at something completely different than if you were looking at um, a call centre but you're really looking at how uh, people operate and how people communicate and all those types of things all the things that are, are potentially going to affect the system and are adding to the problem or uh, are somehow involved within the problem and, the, and then the second um, piece of this looking at first hand knowledge is looking at, at documentation at paperwork now classically this is called printed documentation and if you want to call it that in answering a question that's fine but it could even be online information or uh, the information that's produced by the system or it could be looking at policy documentation but it's all the information um, surrounding the actual problem and the system that's in place at the moment so that's about it now for this particular aspect of the system's life cycle and looking at um, collecting information uh, just please try and understand that it is about different methods for collecting information in order that you can look at what the problem is accurately define what it is and what's going on at the moment and where the solutions might lie but it is about defining the problem not coming up with a solution yet just coming up with ideas of where things are going wrong and what's causing the issues within the system